Previously on Uh Yeah. There was a bit of an elephant in the room when talking about old FNAF animations. There are some other FNAF animations from around this time period, but they probably deserve a separate video. A deeper dive, you may say. We'll get to them eventually. Now for the thrilling conclusion, eight months late. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is a video I've wanted to make for a long time. Ever since the start of my channel, I've been throwing around the idea of making a video similar to my Smike one, but about a certain other individual. As the months went by, however, I kept pushing off the topic, but no more. Today, we're finally diving into the rabbit hole head first. No going back. So, if you were around for the early days of the FNAF fandom, there's a pretty high chance you've seen or at least heard about the subject of this video's infamous content. They go by Three Lame Studio, and they've been making YouTube animation content for ages at this point. He created his channel back in 2012, and has been uploading pretty similar content ever since. However, what may just look like another YouTube content farm spewing out easy content to game the algorithm on the surface is actually a lot deeper than that. This is a story about success, losing it all, and and some of the creepiest animation content ever uploaded to YouTube. This is the story of Three Lame Studio. But first, this video was sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free to play open world MMO game where you command a star base on the front lines of the Star Trek universe. Construct fleets of your favorite ships, recruit legendary officers to crew them, and pursue your goals of expanding territory, exterminating rivals, exploiting resources, and exploring strange new worlds. The game is constantly being updated. Here are just a few of the things that have been recently added. First, there's the new Borg Assimilation Part 1 arc. The Borg are back, in new missions inspired by their iconic appearance in Star Trek The Next Generation. Join fan favorite Hugh the Borg and help him stop a scientist's quest for revenge against the Collective. Then we have a brand new feature, Fleet Commanders. This is a new feature to Star Trek Fleet Command, allowing players to assign well-known Star Trek heroes and villains to oversee strategy from their star bases for increased power and effectiveness in-game. Fleet Commanders launch with three choices, Admiral James T. Kirk, Captain Spock, or Locutus of Borg. Which one will you choose? Download the game now by using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. It's free to play and available on iOS, Android, and Windows devices. Download Star Trek Fleet Command today and join the fight. Thank you to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. So, where do I even begin? I tend to say that a lot with these videos, but seriously, where do I even begin this time? We're talking about a channel that has gone through so many different arcs, drama, and has a back catalog of nearly a thousand videos, if you count both public and archived content. There is no shortage of three limb stuff to talk about, that's for sure. Okay, let's start off by talking about the title of this video. What in the world do I mean by, but not in the way you think? Well, when you think of creepy FNAF content, your mind probably goes to things that are scary creepy. FNAF VHS and stuff along those lines. Three Lames videos are not creepy in that sense. In fact, I doubt they're even trying to be creepy at all. No, we need to shift our focus away from horror creepy to more Elsa gate creepy. Yeah, we're talking about videos that appear to be just simple, harmless children's content on the outside, but are actually far from that in reality. I can make another whole ass video talking about Elsagate FNAF content specifically, especially regarding videos being made within the current day, but let's shift our focus back to Three Lame. Obviously, with him making his channel back in 2012, he clearly didn't start off making FNAF stuff. So we get to talk about another franchise for a little bit, that being Angry Birds. Being one of the most popular mobile games of all time, it's not super shocking that people would try to capitalize on the success of that by making YouTube videos on the game. Although Three Lame didn't simply just make Let's Plays or review Angry Bird toys or something like that, he had a much better idea. As seen in some of his videos that were uploaded much later to the channel, Three Lame is a bit of an artist, like an actual talented artist. This probably comes as a shock to you all who've been watching this footage on screen for the last couple minutes. But yeah, the guy actually has some skill. So, taking that background in the arts, Three Lame decided he was going to make Angry Birds animations. The first Three Lame video ever uploaded was Super Mario vs. Angry Birds vs. Tetris, and it's as batshit crazy as the title makes it sound. We have Mario walking in a straight line as random sh** pops up on the screen, like Homer Simpson, Smurfs, an elephant's ass, and this weird Simpson Wojak-esque character next to a side profile of an overweight man. And I should probably mention that both of these PNGs are next to the elephant's ass. Yeah, this video is f***ing weird. If you think things are gonna get better from here, you're dead wrong. Because things only get weirder. 
How about Angry Birds South Park parody, which is a 16 second video where the cast of South Park has been turned into Angry Birds and they destroy the South Park logo. This isn't some sort of insane one-off either, because this is a genre of videos on this channel. Take a random popular IP, turn them into Angry Birds and profit, I guess? If you couldn't tell by now, these videos aren't targeted towards me or any of you watching at home. These are meant for little Timmy when he gets a hold of mommy's iPad for an afternoon, where he can sit there, drool on the screen, and autoplay hours and hours of Angry Birds killing Super Mario. He also made a lot of Gangnam Style videos around this time, which is probably not a shock to any of you. And I would love to play a full clip of any of them for you, but you know, copyright. Just know that they are bizarre as you probably think they are. As the year went on, 3Lame continued to make even more Angry Birds videos, including a video called Angry Birds Racing, which is noteworthy not just because it was made using 3D animation software, but because it was the start of a subset of racing slash karting videos on the channel. The majority of videos he uploaded during this era don't have any actual animation to them. Most are just PNGs moving around in very weird ways. It gives these early 3Lame videos a very different kind of unsettling or creepy vibe to them that is almost completely different from the frame-by-frame -frame animation content that was soon to come. Speaking of, might as well bite that bullet now and finally move over to 2014. We all know what happened this year. Freddy Fazbear was born and took over YouTube. I already talked a bit in a previous video about the rise of both FNAF and animation content on YouTube, so seeing that this was the next big thing, it shouldn't be a surprise that 3Lame wanted a piece of that pie. Except, that's not actually what happened. Yeah, despite FNAF getting fairly popular even from the very start, 3Lame continued to make his Angry Birds, Simpsons, and Mario videos throughout 2014. The real wave of FNAF content came in 2015. That's when the floodgates were opened. Now it's hard to pinpoint the exact first FNAF 3Lame video, since at one point, he set pretty much every single video to private, and some videos may be lost or archived in other places without their original dates listed. But the first video itself doesn't really matter. What actually matters is just the content itself, because oh boy, there is a lot of weird stuff to go through here. The FNAF 3 Lame Studio arc lasts a couple years, so for now I'm going to drop talking about the channel in terms of what year things happened in, and just talk about his weird FNAF content in general. I'll mention the years again once we leave this FNAF arc, and the time things came out actually matters again. Okay, let's get into it. The most iconic, or should I say infamous, videos 3 Lame made in his FNAF arc would have to be his twerking videos. Okay, these need a little bit of an explanation because they are pretty insane. So around this time, 3Lame started experimenting with new styles of content to add to his channel. Yeah, let's just say that. I guess the act of twerking was at a bit of a cultural high point around this time, so he started making YouTube videos featuring popular characters of media twerking. I cannot believe this is a real thing I am saying for a YouTube video on my YouTube channel. What even is my life at this point? <laughs> anyway, these videos aren't just simple animations of Freddy throwing it back. They're crazy videos where the content on screen changes every two seconds and a bunch of very weird and disturbing animations play on loop for like a minute or two straight. These videos feature music with 3Lame himself singing, and can I just say, 3Lame was cooking some heat in the studio when he made these tracks. I mean, Bonnie, 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 Chica, 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 Foxy, Foxy, Foxy is truly some impressive lyric writing. Now, nah, but for real, these videos feel like what I assume being on an acid trip feels like. It's just a bunch of flashing colors and nonsensical imagery. Just by watching the footage on screen right now, you can probably tell the way 3Lame made his videos changed quite a bit from the early days. Gone were the days where all its videos were made using weirdly puppeteered PNG images. Now we're in the era of actual animation. Although on that note, you can also probably tell that this animation style is incredibly weird. The way 3Lame does more traditional animation stuff is very obviously traced from other works for the most part. But it's hard to tell the stuff he's tracing from is even all other 2D animation. Some of the stuff, especially in these twerking videos, feels almost rotoscoped over actual videos of people doing the actions. Obviously the effect is done very poorly, but that's more than likely what's going on here. The end result is this very creepy, off-putting animation style where something feels wrong in literally every shot of a video. I have yet to see another YouTube animator capture the absolute stank that these videos have. It's truly a magical talent to be able to make something like this. The funniest, or maybe I shouldn't say funniest, but most interesting part about the Torque of 87 lore comes with the third entry in the series. 
Yes, this is a series of videos. There are actually a pretty decent handful of these. Anyway, in the third part, the song and visuals are a little interesting. I don't even have anything to say. Just, just look at this. Cancel, 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 cancel. Play, 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 play. Shut up. Yeah, you can really tell this is a bit of a breaking point for Three Lane. As this video almost feels like he's trying to jab at his audience, like I don't even know what his thought process was here. But let it be known we are not done with weird Three Lane controversy stuff. It only gets worse from here, everybody. Even though this video feels like a breaking point of sorts, he made more FNAF stuff after it, including more Twerk of 87 content. So this one video is kind of just a quick glimpse into the mind of Three Lame during this entire FNAF content arc. We have even more to cover though. The Twerk of 87 is really just the tip of the FNAF Three Lame iceberg. It's time to talk about some music. As I already mentioned during the Twerk of 87 segment, Three Lame actually sang the songs that were used in those very videos. This musical side of him actually extends further than those videos, as he's posted a couple original songs on a bunch of different topics. But for this video, we'll just stick to the FNAF stuff. First up, we have Creepy Tonight, which is interesting for a couple reasons. First off, the way this thing was animated is actually insane. Definitely not as creepy as the 2D traced stuff, but absolutely more insane. Oh, this is great. What yep. the hell is this? Why are they animated as if they were 2D images in 3D? Yeah, they're like squashing and stretching. Is that three lame singing? I can't even tell. It yeah, kind I of sounds it like him. Oh, my phone's at 4%. This entire thing drained my battery. I'll be right back. Oh, oh no. <laughs> three lame killed your phone. That's three up. Three, yeah, three lame takes like no survivors. So. This entire video takes place in one room with everyone standing in place. We have Steve in the middle, who's singing the song, and he's animated kind of weird, but it's nothing too odd. However, the insane part comes in with the animatronics. For some reason, these were animated as if they were 2D PNGs, and they just squash and stretch up and down for the entire music video. I have no idea why this was done, other than maybe it was just easier, but the end product is Chica almost falling over, then standing back up straight for a total of 3 minutes and 44 seconds. The song itself is straight heat. Once again, Bro was cooking when he wrote these lyrics. I really felt it when he said he was gonna kill the animatronics. Good luck, Steve, I believe in you. The other song I wanna mention is called Go Back, which is this really strange mix of 2D and 3D animation where the security guard is done in the FNAF twerking trace 2D art style, but everything else is this never-ending 3D FNAF nightmare that loops forever. The way the background moves makes it look like he's Michael Jackson moonwalking backwards throughout the entire music video. Random animatronics constantly fly by the screen, and nothing beats it when the security guard randomly switches to this overly goofy animation where he just becomes a fucking rubber hose cartoon character. And the song. The song! I have never heard a more beautiful chorus in my life. Okay, jokes aside, these songs are all pretty much just nonsense, and none of these actually did that well views-wise compared to his other stuff. Truly a shame these aren't up there with the other FNAF YouTube song classics. Alright, we've seen twerking content, music content. The next logical place to look would be if he had a proper FNAF series on his channel. Yeah, of course he does. Yeah, he has a proper FNAF series on the channel. The Freddy Show is a series of videos on Three Lame's channel where the FNAF 1 gang, and sometimes Springtrap, are placed in wacky situations. And by wacky situations, I mean whatever this shit is. I am your personal healthcare companion. You can't be my personal healthcare companion. You're obese. Okay, but why are Freddy's <laughs> eyes- <laughs> Whoa! Here? You should lose weight. I don't mean to- They're assholes. So many questions and we'll get zero answers. <laughs> Okay. This is like, oh my thing. god. Get out of here! For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna talk about every episode I watched. That will probably give you all a good understanding of what this series has to offer. Number one. Freddy meets Sonic. This is a very nothing video where pretty much nothing happens, but it does serve as a good place to explain the basic episode structure. 
The Freddy Show is almost like a Monster of the Week style cartoon, but replace Monster with Walter fucking White. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. To be honest. Oh no. <laughs> What was oh my god. Oh, I get it. It's like a Breaking Bad reference. A good majority of the episodes feature Freddy talking to whatever random pop culture character was selected to be the security guard of that episode. The characters almost never move from their place on screen and have random animations that play sometimes. This video in particular is around four minutes long, yet due to the pacing, it feels like 10 minutes. Nothing happens. It's so boring. I don't even see how a little kid could find this amusing. There's nothing going on here. Sonic's personality feels like he was based on the Wikipedia page's first paragraph for Sonic the Hedgehog. This video sucks. Number two, Freddy meets Walter White. This episode is way funnier than the Sonic one. For starters, something that's constant in this series is that the characters will say that they're doing something when they actually aren't. Because animating the characters going to different rooms would be too much effort, I guess? They essentially just Discord roleplay what the scenario is supposed to be. This video also features Bonnie, who I guess is a girl in this series. I thought about marrying Bonnie once, but she always Bonnie. does that. So congratulations on the successful transition. All she says in the video is Bonnie in this Alvin and the Chipmunks ass voice. Bonnie. Really great addition to the cast here. Anyway, Walter White kills Freddy at the end by blowing up the pizzeria. 10 out of 10, next. Number three. Freddy meets Baymax. This episode has some crazy lore drops, such as Freddy apparently being anti-vax. Oh yeah, he also kills Baymax in front of everybody. Great episode. There's also these girls at the end of the video that he paid to shill his channel. Someone help them, they're trapped in a three lane video. Number four, Freddy meets Steve. Nope, I'm done. You all pretty much get what this series is at this point. I wouldn't be adding much talking about the inner workings of Freddy meets Steve. The Freddy show is pretty much the bottom of the three lane barrel. It was made to easily pump out episodes with the same format each and every time. And once again, I have no idea how any kid would find these entertaining. I could maybe understand why they find the twerking videos entertaining, since those things are crazy and stuff happens on screen all the time. But these videos are longer on average and are just talking with the occasional random character death or looping traced animation. All right, enough about that. Let's wrap up this FNAF section with some random leftover stuff. Homer and Five Nights at Freddy's is an important video for a couple reasons. But just note, this is not the last time we'll see a video in this style. It's kind of magical how this video switches back and forth from kind of competent line art to actual MS Paint tier work within the span of a 26 second video. Also, the Chica design in this video is crazy. I would love to know which random piece of fan art this was probably stolen from. Freddy Kart is an evolution of those Angry Birds racing videos I talked about earlier and this video might be the craziest one yet. We have a 3D model Foxy flying an attack plane and shooting everybody, an Elmo Angry Bird slingshotting themselves out of a car, Fry and Leela from Futurama making out in a car, Jimmy Neutron, Walter White, Morty, pretty much any character that you would think would be in a three lame racing video is probably here. And yes, that includes the entire Angry Birds cast all stuffed into a car if you were curious. All right, I'm done talking about the FNAF arc. We've seen some of the most bizarre YouTube videos ever made already. But trust me, we are actually only getting started here. The Downfall arc is even more interesting than anything I've already talked about. You're about to witness a man grasp for every single straw there is and slowly lose his mind. Now there is a happy ending to all this, but strap in because this is where the real story of Three Lane begins. A piece of YouTube history that you all may or may not remember was the Adpocalypse. This is when a bunch of YouTube advertisers pulled their ads off the site and left a bunch of creators making way less than they did before. Eventually things went back to normal, but it took a while and put a lot of YouTubers in an awkward position. Now imagine that you're a YouTuber and the Adpocalypse greatly affects your income. You'd probably be pretty stressed out, right? Now imagine this happens at the same time that your YouTube channel starts getting less and less views on new videos along with old videos getting demonetized. That was the position 3Lame was in around the years of 2017 and 2018. As you can probably guess, someone going from getting millions of views on their videos to getting a fraction of a fraction of that would be a pretty big hit to someone's mental well-being. And that was pretty obvious if you just paid attention to the content he was putting out at the time. However, the most interesting part of this arc has to do with the Let's Play channel Oni Plays. On some episodes of Oni Plays, the cast had brought up 3Lame, I guess this somehow made its way back to 3 Lame himself because he ended up feeding into the bit and posting nothing but Oni Plays animations for a good chunk of time. This, at first thought, doesn't make that much sense from a money-making and getting views perspective. However, 
Three Lame didn't see it like that. There are a good handful of Oni Plays animations that have a lot of views. However, most of them have some sort of actual effort put into them, making them worth watching. I guess Three Lame didn't stop and think that maybe his content farm tier video style wouldn't hit the target audience he was looking for with these Oni Plays animations. Because he tried his damn best to make the content do well, but never found any real success. If you want some proof about his mindset at the time, look no further than his Twitter page. We're gonna get back to this for a more in-depth look in a second, but for now, let's just focus on these two tweets. The first tweet shows a comment made by YouTube animator Brandon Turner. Both him and Three Lame had made an Oni Plays animated for Ding Dong as president. So as a joke, when the Three Lame version came out, Brandon pinned a comment on his animation, saying that the Three Lame version was the superior version. Three Lame then screenshotted this comment and posted it to Twitter, with a caption complaining that his version of the animation only had 20,000 views. He took the comment 100% seriously and was genuinely confused as to why this version wasn't doing as well. Then he posted another tweet featuring another Brandon Turner comment, this time seemingly blaming YouTube for his Oni Plays animation not doing as well. Three Lame getting mad at YouTube is a pretty common occurrence on his Twitter, which is actually where most of this arc is archived. His Twitter account is truly a hidden gem on the website, featuring tweets such as him putting his 100,000 subscriber plaque in the toilet with the caption, This YouTube play button for 100,000 subs is just crap. Shit. My views dropped suddenly. YouTube apocalypse? I had given 100%, and now I am no more. All my videos, view-wise, are all but a flat line. Farewell! Multiple tweets are just images of cocks with Pickle Rick edited onto them, which we can't show you, but trust me, it's as funny as it sounds. There's also lots of epic tweets that are all about owning the haters, such as this one that reads, To all the haters, listen carefully, stay tuned, you're gonna have so much more to be pissed about. Spongebob goes to Doki Doki Literature Club, DDLC twerking, Donald Trump in DDLC, Peter Griffin in DDLC, and much more. The more you hate me, the more I do. Like I said, Three Lame's Twitter is an absolute gem. I could genuinely talk about it forever. But to save time, let's just rapid fire through some of the best tweets. Homer goes to the literature club. Sounds great. YouTube doesn't work. Over 300,000 subscribers. I just uploaded one of the best Deltarune animation out there, and I've gotten barely a thousand views. Whereas YouTubers with a bunch of thousands of subs get 10,000 views for their Deltarune shitty videos. Go figure. Have a look. And then this is the animation in question he's talking about. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Okay, enough. I'm going to study Russian for the rest of my life. I need to make a viral video. What should I do? Can I take music from Vavar and Siva Gunner for free? Hey guys, seriously. I was thinking, maybe I should do gameplay. Would you still watch my videos? Three lame grumps. Fuck, I need an idea. Come on guys, what should I do? Maybe I should stick with porn on X videos. <laughs> <laughs> Vavr twerking with Granddad and Ding Dong. I am Vavr! You get the idea. Three Lame was venting pretty much every single thought he had at the time on this Twitter account. Now, there's a little bit of Three Lame Twitter lore that's lost to time, but you gotta trust me on this because I swear this happened back when the Twitter was still active. At some point during one of his Twitter meltdowns, he posted a picture of an open toilet with shit in it. Now I have no idea if this picture was a Google image or if he actually took a shit and took a picture of it, but sadly, or maybe thankfully, this is lost media along with some of the other more insane stuff he tweeted at the time. But yeah, Three Lame's Twitter was truly a sight to see when it was active, if you can say that. Enough about his Twitter though, what happened next? The Oni Plays arc on Three Lame's channel lasted a bit longer, long enough to actually kind of merge with the next arc, which I have no idea what I'd even call it. A lot of the videos at this time feature Cuphead, Family Guy, The Simpsons, and a whole bunch of other side properties like Doki Doki Literature Club, Spongebob, and Donald Trump. Most of the videos in this era feature two characters talking to each other while a bunch of random stuff happens in the background. And the Oni Plays cast acts like a laugh track. Remember when I said we weren't done with Three Lame Controversy? This video is what I was talking about. Homer Simpson and Cuphead meets the devil is a video where Homer and Marge are Cuphead OCs for some reason, and they talk about the devil while he loops a bunch of traced animations on the couch. This video is oddly racist for some reason. It's not unintentional or anything either. It's literally called out within the video itself. I really, I really just don't know what he was thinking. I don't even know, man. Then we have Pickle Rick and Cuphead full version, where Rick and Morty are both penises for some reason. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Let's finish this. I'm done. Gonna keep this next part short and sweet. 
After complaining about YouTube for months and trying pretty much everything, at some point 3 Lame started making these new videos that I think are in Italian. I guess moving away from his bad rep in the English community was enough to save his channel, because once he started doing these videos, they actually did well. I don't really care about any of these enough to talk about them, but they're probably significantly better than what he was doing before, so there you go. A happy ending to this story. His recent recent stuff hasn't been doing that well, so maybe he'll try and switch up his content again, but I think it's pretty safe to say that 3 Lame is here to stay at this point. Bro has gone through worse, he'll figure something out. And that was the story of 3 Lame, YouTube's creepiest animator. I hope you all learned something today, or at least laughed at some of the absurd stuff he was making all those years ago. If you ever need some videos to laugh at with a couple friends, I highly recommend 3 Lame's channel. It's always a good time. Anyway, that's enough out of me. I've been a yeah, and I'll see you all next time.